Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. I'm joined once again by the intrepid JJ from ASUS. JJ, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. And we are going to do a quick demonstration, I should say JJ, because he's, he's going to do most of the work here, of the USB BIOS flashback function that is uh, enabled for the entire line of ASUS X79 motherboards. Yep. JJ, uh, from what I understand, you can use this function to flash your BIOS, which I know a lot of uh, home users out there can be a little bit... Uh, a little bit scared about sometimes because it can be a delicate process. But you can use it to flash your BIOS to upgrade it uh, to the latest version with no CPU installed, mm -hmm. no memory installed, mm -hmm. simply by connecting the power and a USB stick. That's right. You got it. So um, we're going to go ahead and actually just use this R4E as an example, but actually if we were just were to connect a power supply and run power, we could actually use this board as a case in point. But um, here where you actually can see on the screen, if we go ahead and come up on here, we actually have BIOS version uh, 0403 for our actual UEFI and uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to actually shut down the system. Um, so even though we do have the CPU, the memory, the graphics card installed, none of that actually matters. If we were to remove those components from the system, as I noted, just literally having just the 24 pin power, the 8 pin CPU power connected, you would just need to connect your USB flash drive and connect, uh, press this button to go ahead and execute the flash process. Okay. So um, as you see here, I have my flash drive connected to the actual port. Got to plug it into that white port. That's correct. And we're just going to go ahead and check, and we see here that we have a file that says r4e.rom, which is what we actually need to go ahead and uh, label that file. So we've gone ahead and labeled it r4e.rom, and that's all we're going to need to do. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and shut down our system. And from here, we're then going to go ahead and just execute the USB BIOS flashback. And so our focus at implementing this tool was really just to give users an easy way to be able to go ahead and update the actual BIOS when either first setting up the system or in the advent that they don't feel comfortable using the integrated easy flash within the UEFI or from within the operating system in AI Suite 2, they could go this route. Can this also be used uh, to, say, restore a BIOS that was corrupt? That's correct. Uh, definitely in a situation where maybe you get too aggressive with an overclock, you can do that. All right. So we've gone ahead and... Uh, have it connected here, right? So we're going to go ahead and press the button. We're going to hold it down for approximately about three seconds. And that will then go ahead and uh, start to blink on our board. We won't be able to see uh, it, but uh, we'll go ahead and start to blink here. It's those big matrix cards that are blocking the light. Uh, yeah. It's still there. Oh, uh, no. I think I need to hold it down just a little bit longer. There we go, and we can see there that actually now that the button has gone ahead and started to blink, okay, and we see our flash drive is also now blinking because it's actually reading the ROM file, and if we could see, the actual LED light here on the board is also blinking directly above the ROG board. For our channel boards, they don't have a light, though, on the actual uh, BIOS chip, so this actual um, button itself actually has an LED built into it, and that will blink, that, excuse me, that will blink blue, indicating the flash process. So okay. once the actual blinking has completed, that actually lets you know that the actual flash itself has finalized. Now, in some situations, the user does need to be aware that depending on what's contained within the actual UEFI update, such as um, large extensive updates, such as option ROMs, um, which have to do with the PCH and the serial ATA controller, as well as um, what are called MRC updates, which are memory code updates from Intel, different things like that can sometimes uh, be very drastic. And when the system gets actually repowered on after the BIOS flash has been completed, it can produce a very lengthy post. That's not dependent on this process. That's just dependent on the amount of updating that has occurred now to the BIOS. Um, so just be aware of that in some situations after that flash, it could still take the board maybe like a minute, minute and a half to actually finalize its post. So the user doesn't want to actually jump into any abnormalities thinking the system is not going to come back. Um, just depending on the update. Some other updates could be much smaller though, and the system might repost back very quickly within the normal post cycle of maybe like 10 to 15 seconds. That longer post though would probably occur if you were updating the BIOS via any other method at, as well? That's correct, and, okay. and because it's dependent actually on what's included within the actual BIOS update itself. Okay. And like I said, uh, initially at the very beginning of launches, we try to make sure that updates like that aren't rolled out, but occasionally Intel might pass us very high priority updates like that to help extend performance, uh, compatibility, different variables like that. So occasionally you might see those type of more extended cycles for the BIOS updating process. And it's important to make sure to not shut off the board during that process. Because actually if you were to look at maybe like the debug code, take for instance on this ROG board or also on this uh, deluxe board, you'll actually see that this debug code is changing during that process, mm -hmm. even though nothing is necessarily posting. 
and that's because it's going through different memory training updates, the update for the MRC and different variables like that. Okay. So once that uh, completes, then you'll see the board post normally. So uh, we should be probably even wrapping it up pretty closely here. It's like it has stopped blinking. It has stopped blinking. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and say our flash has been completed. We were at, I think, a 0403. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and press our start button. And the system will now go ahead and attempt to post. As I said, um, this update that we have is actually a pretty big update, so it's going to go through a couple of little changes before it goes ahead and completes the actual post. But as you saw, I didn't actually have to enter into the BIOS, didn't have to go into Easy Flash, I didn't have to do any of that. And like I said, uh, same thing as if, they, if we were first setting up the system, this was a nice time saver in that you wouldn't have to worry about maybe potentially having to reaccess the socket, maybe potentially damage any pins inside the socket, adding memory or any of those other components. You could have just directly gone this route. Now, um, we can see here our debug LED has fixed that 70, which is actually a memory code initialization. So that's because this update included an MRC update from Intel, which is updating some of the parameters for how the CPU interacts with the DRAM, affecting some of the performance parameters as well as other variables. Um, but now it's cycle gone through that. Now we can see it's continuing forward because as part of that overall UEFI update, these things are now being updated and it's gonna get ready to go ahead and complete its normal post through. But we see still essentially nothing still going on as far as the screen, but it doesn't mean that the actual flash itself wasn't successful. I imagine in a situation where you, for example, had an older motherboard and a newer CPU and you weren't sure if they were compatible or if you know you needed a BIOS update to be compatible with a newer CPU release, uh, this would be a great method for doing that without having to obtain an older CPU to get the board to post in, able, in order to go into the BIOS and actually uh, do the change there. You got it 100% correct. You could definitely go ahead and stop that issue because it's like normally like a chicken and the egg issue, right? Where you can't do one without the other. Mm -hmm. So we can see here, We've gone ahead and completed the BIOS flash, and we're now at build 0056. So there you go. And that is how you do a BIOS update with the USB BIOS flashback uh, tool from ASUS. It's uh, available on all the X79 series boards, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. JJ, thanks again for stopping by and helping us out today. Thank you for having me as always. All right. If you enjoyed this video, please head over to our new egg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Also check out JJ on the ASUS ROG YouTube channel for more videos, as well as the ASUS ROG forums. I'm Paul with New Egg TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.